Hello, hello, hello. It's me once again. And today we are talking about uh, digital art, how you can start digital art, the programs and tools that I used when I first started out, and why it's not actually as expensive as people might believe. So let's get started, shall we? We're going to jump right into it. I've got a speed paint on in the background, just uh, me carrying on with some overpainting for a drawing that I'm working on. And uh, I'm going to be using Sessions Diana Music for the background of this music. And any information uh, that I've stated in this video is down below. So let's start off, shall we? Um, when I first started art, um digital art specifically it was a good couple of years ago now and i'm gonna put a few examples up with each program um and tablet that i'm talking about today and um you can probably you can look at my oldest videos on the channel to see some examples of the art that i'm talking about today and we're gonna start off simply with the very first program that i ever used which was microsoft paint and you might think oh that is a terrible program like there's basically no tools available in it it's really you know very limited there's no layers no blending um it's really quite difficult to make a good art in it and that's what you might believe but I would like to challenge that by saying that's incorrect. So even though the tools are very limited, um, one thing that you will notice is that you don't actually need a drawing tablet to use um, to draw in the program and the program is completely free on any Windows desktop. Um, and so not only, well, obviously you need a computer in order for that and not everyone might have access to that, but we will get into that later. But if you do have a computer that has a Windows desktop, then MS Paint is a great starting tool because you can use your mouse. There's lots of little tips and tricks that either I can make a video about or you can look them up yourself. There's loads out there on YouTube and um, it allows you to kind of get away with sketching, creating an under sketch and then a line art on top by using the line tool that's available and um, taking advantage of the program in <laughs> ways that when I learnt, I absolutely abused. And so you can really create some clean art with it for completely free, you know? Um, and so the, the point is to not underestimate the program, I think, when learning it, it doesn't take that long to learn. It's just like I said, those little tips and tricks that will really help you create a clean piece of work. And um, the main issue with it is that it is pixelated in the way that you're literally drawing pixel by pixel. So it's kind of hard to create clean line art that other programs can help you achieve. Um, but again, there's loads and loads of examples where this is proven wrong and absolutely gorgeous art is created. I find that um, with enough practice, you can definitely create not only realistic, but also other stylis stylized art like anime art, stuff like that. And um, one of the things that MS Paint is really notorious for is the uses of bases, um, which you can easily find on Google. Now, I would say that bases are a very controversial topic. But if you're an 11 year old kid and you're just trying to learn the program, trying to learn art, so long as you don't say that you created the base, there's no problem in using it to practice, to learn the program and to really get a hang of drawing as a whole because it can be quite difficult. I know I definitely did. And if you say that you haven't used bases when you're drawing digitally, then <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're wrong. A lot of people have, and there's no shame in that. Everyone has to start somewhere, you know? Um, and the next program that I would like to go over, the next program that I moved up to was Paint Tool Sci. Now this program is not free. It has a one-time payment, which I think is about $60, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and even though it's embarrassing to admit, I just used a cracked version of the very first version of Paint Tool Sci. Would I advise that? No, because you should definitely be supporting the creators of the program. But if you can find a safe way to do it, if you've got absolutely no money to spare, then, you know, I didn't say you should do it, but it is definitely possible. And again, to use Paint Tool Sci, you don't need a drawing tablet at all because there is an inbuilt line art tool which allows you to simulate pressure and it has 
every single feature that you would need for a drawing program to create beautiful art. It's got layers, it's got blending modes, it's got a variety of brushes, the ability to make your own brushes, an extensive amount of brush settings to create a really custom feel to each of the brushes already available. And um, yeah, there's just absolutely loads that you can do with the program and I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, I think it's on its second version now, which has implemented even more features. I did try out the second version and I think that it's just a boomer part of me that preferred the first version and I just wish that some of the features they put into the second one they would have just put into the first one but I don't really use it that much anymore so it's up to personal preference really um, and you can use a drawing tablet with it I did but again you don't have to and there are examples of my channel where I did draw out my sketch with a mouse and then just line out with with the line out tool with my mouse and then simulate the pressure it's really easy to learn it's um very versatile and i would absolutely recommend it and the next program is definitely more on the expensive side and it's the next program that i tried out i'm going in order of the programs that i tried out linearly if that's the word i don't know chronologically that would be better and that would be photoshop now this is not cheap photoshop is part of adobe and so you do have to have a subscription for it and it can get very expensive so would i recommend photoshop for drawing absolutely not not if you're a beginner not if you're just getting into digital art there's absolutely no need for you to get photoshop when there are other alternatives out there for completely free which i'll talk about uh that do a better job i would say because photoshop was primarily created for um image editing not necessarily drawing so it can be quite tough to get around it's got i would say from my personal experience a decent learning curve you've got a lot of tools straight off the bat a lot of tools it's quite difficult to find the tools that you want to use the layout can be difficult to maneuver but once you get the hang of it it's very smooth to use i would say just personally i'm not the most comfortable with it um and if you're again like i said new to digital art there's no need to use it um would i recommend using a tablet with it absolutely there is a line tool integrated into it um, but I would not say it is as smooth as Paint Tool Sci um, or as simple as Microsoft Paint, to be honest. But it is there, so you don't need a tablet for it, but it is recommended, if you ask me. And the last program that I will talk about today um, is Krita. This is in terms of PC programs. Um, and Krita is, again, completely free. And, oh my god, if I could kiss this program... I would because it is amazing it's a free open source drawing software and it is very reminiscent of Photoshop in the way that it looks it's got very sleek design and even though at first when I tried it out I wasn't quite enjoying it now it is my go-to program and I would never switch back because it is just so smooth to use it's got every single tool that I need there is a way to import Photoshop brushes into it you do have to maneuver around a little bit but there's loads of tutorials online of how you can do that and um i personally don't really use any brushes other than the standard ones that it comes with because it comes with a load it's got a massive variety of blend modes for your layers a good amount of filters and um settings that you can mess around with and it's very intricate program that is very easy to get a hang of and there is so many tutorials online that really introduce you to the program and even the website itself has help and um, really descriptions of each tool online the creator website does and so if you ever need help there is plenty of resources online that will explain what you need for it in terms of whether you will need a tablet for it or not so i personally would use a tablet for it i haven't really messed around with the lineup possibilities without a tablet just because i started using it after i got stuck to my tablets but i mean once you've got the hang of using your mouse on other programs it's quite easy to transfer those skills to every other program that you use you know it's about getting the base knowledge and transferring it but the program itself is free and that's why it's a must on this list 
Um, in terms of if you don't have a PC, if you have a phone, if you have an iPad, if you have other um, other pieces of technology like that, then there are definitely some great apps that you can use on those. However, because they're not my primary um, tools of the trade, I wouldn't be able to give a direct description or I guess recommendation for those but there's loads of resources online where you can look at those. Um, in terms of drawing tablets, once you have found a program that you are comfortable with and it's perfectly okay to switch between programs as you grow as an artist, that's exactly what I did, um, then it's possible for you to try and look at a tablet. So I've actually gone through four drawing tablets. I'm on my fourth right now. And um, I've stuck to the same brand for all of them. So even though there are loads and loads and loads of different brands that you can choose from, I personally stuck to Huion because it's a cheap alternative to Wacom. And the tablets are sleek. They've got a great amount of pressure level sensitivity, great amount of choices, and they go from very cheap to very expensive for every single need that you have. And they're also Android compatible. Unfortunately, they're not iOS compatible. I don't believe none of the ones that I have seen are. Um, but yes, they are Android compatible. So if you draw on an Android, that could be very helpful. And so the tablets that I started off with will go up in price as I talk about them. And they've all got their own pros and cons, really. So it's up to your price range and your preferences. So when I just started out, um, I started with the H430P. So its base um, price is £30.99 and it's currently on sale for £21.99. It's very cheap, it's very cute and small and it's very lightweight because of its tiny, tiny size. And it's got four keys that you can program and it's very comfortable to use. I primarily used it to play Osu and to do quick little sketches to really get used to the hand-eye coordination that tablets require. Um, graphic tablets that is not display and it was just very easy and convenient just to plug and play you know and if you're looking to start out on um, drawing digitally and you don't want to throw loads and loads of money into a drawing tablet then I would say that a H430P is more than enough to get you started really it's very cheap reliable and easy to use you know and the next tablet that I got was their H610 Pro. Now, I believe this is discontinued now and it has been replaced with the HS610. Um, I believe that's what it was at least. Um, and this tablet worked great again, a uh, much bigger screen. And I found for my personal preference that when you have a bigger tablet, having that hand-eye coordination is much easier because you're not having to fit the aspect ratio of your screen into a smaller surface area. So you have much greater control of your pen and your pressure. So if you want to go for a tablet that is slightly bigger but still not too expensive, then I would definitely have a look at the Inspiroy, um graphic tablet line on Huion and um, my next tablet that I got I actually got um, I think a year or two ago and I still use it to this day so I'm using two tablets at the same time and it's the H1161 so its base price is £80.99 and it's currently on sale at the time of recording for £50.99 and this is a great price for someone that wants to spend a little bit more to again get that bigger surface area that will make the hand-eye coordination much easier um, without spending you know over 100 over 200 pounds on like a Wacom um, and it's great it's this this tablet I love it so much I use it mainly for my concepting work in college and it's serving me more than enough purpose that I need it to it's absolutely perfect um, the tablet is very lightweight and easy. I can put it in my bag and then just set it up at college. And the one main issue is if you do want to use outside of your home is that because Wacom is the industry standard, there's not a great chance that computers outside of the home will have the driver needed. So that's one thing that you've got to watch out for um, because other places tend to stick to Wacom. Um, 
tablets and their drivers but the tablet in itself great amount of level of pressure sensitivity um very sleek and the programmable keys are really easy to use and my favorite part about it will definitely have to be the touch strip that it comes with it makes zooming in and out much easier much more fun and it's just um I don't know, it's just a fun tablet to use, you know, and it's not too expensive, so um, yeah, definitely would recommend that. Now, if you want to go for the more pricier end of tablets, then I would definitely recommend a display tablet. However, if you're only just getting into digital art, then I would say stick to graphics tablets for the time being, because you don't want to waste your money on a product that you might not end up liking, you know, you might not end up using a lot. It's much better to um, think of these products, these tablets as an investment, really, of your time, your money, your effort of how much are you going to use it compared to how much it costs? Is it going to be worth it? Um, and so I only really went for the display tablet years after I started digital art, after I got comfortable with not only multiple drawing programs, but also my previous tablets to ensure that I would really get my use out of it, that it was very helpful. For me, the main reason I wanted to upgrade to a display tablet was because even though the hand-eye coordination that I had was basically perfect at this point after three or four years of using graphics tablets, um, I think that having a display makes it much easier to do certain things like for example selecting items and stuff like that it's just nicer to have the screen right in front of you to see more clearly what you're working on and it also just works as a great second display you know um and so the graphics tab sorry the display tablet that i ended up going with was the canvas 16 from huion the 2021 version and its base price is £349, but it's currently on a flash sale for £279. I got it on sale during the Black Friday sale for Christmas last year. And oh my god, I love this tablet so much. It is amazing. The one pro um, that I would really say about it is it's a big screen that really... It's not as big as my monitor because my monitor's... Um, a standard size of 1920 by 1080 but it is um it is considerably big enough where it's relatively similar to my monitor i guess that would make sense in terms of wording i didn't want to go for a canvas 12 or 13 where the canvas wouldn't feel right compared to my monitor because i like to work on um standard resolution canvas sizes so i don't know just having a slightly bigger screen was something that I personally was looking for. But if you're trying to cut down on costs and still get into display tablets, then I would definitely look at the Canvas 12 or 13. If you do want a more expensive display tablet from um, Wacom, there are still options there. But again, those go very high from prices very quickly. But Cintiqs, I have heard amazing things about them and they are the industry standards. So if you do want to look at that, I would recommend you do but it's all up to personal preference and again budget so what is my main con about the canvas 16 now that i've used it for a while the first thing right off the bat i would say is that you have got to buy the um screen protector the anti-glare screen protector and the stand separately from the main product and that can be quite expensive to add on if you're just looking for the tablet of course they're not necessary but i cannot live without my stand and i'm very glad that i got it with the tablet it changed a lot it's just much easier much more comfortable to use and adjust and um personally i um i, I would say it was a great idea that i purchased the stand with it um but it is again not necessary the other con is because of the size that i wanted it is a very big tablet and i don't have a lot of desk space so if you don't have a lot of space in your room or on your desk then it might be worth looking for the smaller sizes again but if that's not an issue for you then you can look for a product that you think would be more suitable to your size there are also standalone products available from most brands out there, Huey on Wacom and, you know, all the sorts. Um, and if you're not interested in either of those, there are always other brands that you could look at. There is, of course, Wacom, which I've already mentioned. XP Pen, which is also a good budget-friendly brand of display tablets. 
um, my friend has a massive one and she absolutely adores it and I've tried it out myself and it's very smooth as well so I definitely recommend XP Pen and if you're not looking to use a computer then there are also other alternatives like iPads you know you could even draw on your phone um, Android devices as well that are available that you can get drawing software on and try out and as always if you're drawing on your phone then there are Huion tablets available that you could plug in that are Android compatible I'm not sure about Wacom but that's definitely something that you guys could look into and um, yeah I think the main idea of this video is to showcase really that you don't need a lot of money to get started the whole premise of this is you're brand new to digital art you've just you want to try something new other than traditional or you don't even like traditional and you want to get straight head fast into digital and this just goes to show that you don't need a lot of resources for that you can um just try it out really cheaply you know and as always the most important part is that you just have fun with your tools of the trade because if you're not enjoying them then there's not much point having them you know um and yeah if there's anything that i missed out i'll probably put it in the description of this video but i hope that this was somewhat informative and this video is not sponsored by huey honors which is i wish that it was because i just love the brand personally and they're the only brand that i've had experience with um or at least the most experience with because i've only used one or two tablets from other brands um so yeah Take of that what you will and I hope you guys happy drawing.